I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Today we're going to talk about Avengers X-Men Blood Ties. In honor of the Disney-Fox merger and hopefully based on antitrust rulings and such, we're going to be seeing the X-Men folded back into the MCU and we're going to see some X-Men uh, Avengers action going on. And everybody and their brother wants to see a story like Avengers vs. X-Men. I'm like, wouldn't it be fun to see the first time these teams meet up mm -hmm. and watch them knock the shit out of each other. No, that is not fun and I don't want to see that. It could be fun. Is that it, what this book is? No. Oh. No, this is a celebration. It is a 30 year anniversary love letter to both X-Men and the Avengers in 1993. But it's called Blood Ties. Yeah, but it's not about like the blood that's being spilt, although Blood is certainly spilled in this book. It's more about the, the blood of Magneto, and we'll get into it in a minute. But if you guys want an epic crossover that yeah. involves the Avengers and the X-Men and words like conflagration and intransigence <laughs> and governmental bureaucracy, then you have got the right book. And you're going to click the description and get it, because this series is dope. <laughs> Was that like all Stark? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. You guys can be the judge. I don't know if you like this. Or this not. is this is everything that was reading X Men and the Avengers in 1993. Okay. Like, it's just a, it was a quick. Is it very long story arc? <laughs> is it across multiple titles? Yes, okay. it, but just between X Men and the Avengers. Okay. Okay. They didn't pull Spider Man in. For Thank this event. God in heaven, no. <laughs> No, so uh, the so it's multiple authors are we talking? Or yeah, it, okay, yeah. But it's the, you don't know this, and no. like two artists, I take it. Multiple artists. Multiple, multiple artists. artists. Yes. Even better. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, but some of them are like John Romita Jr. and others oh. are. Uh, uh, I think one of the Cuberts works on this. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's J.R. Jr. from the '90s, so it's like it's, pretty good. All right. Um, it's not. He hasn't quite reached like. The level that was like perfect, John Romita Jr., but he's getting there. He's getting his feet wet. Right. Uh, this story needs some context before we can even begin. What yeah. an X Men story needs context. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, and the Avengers also need context. Uh, yeah. So first yeah. of all, the Avengers are shorter because nobody cared. Okay. Okay. There are two Avengers teams. Okay. That seems Avengers. to be like a common thing yeah. in the Avengers. It's true. There being multiple teams. Mm -hmm. This one was the Avengers and the West Coast Avengers. Okay. <clears throat> they lost the coin flip. No, Hawkeye <laughs> was a dick and he took his toys and went to the coast. Nice. And then named himself, we're the West Coast Avengers. Yes. You could go with another word. There's like a thousand other words you could pick. Yeah, yeah. but he didn't. And like the new Avengers, right? Like new and improved Avengers, or not, not no. even no Avengers. Oh, like just... oh he, yeah. he, you know what? You're onto something because at the end of this, oh. the West Coast Avengers are no more, and they dissolve it into a new team that does not use the Avengers name. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Right. The team is called Force Works, <laughs> and it sucks. Okay, that sounds like a first idea. Force it, works. And it was. And force in the 90s... works? It's like Microsoft works. <laughs> <laughs> no, but with force. <laughs> Listen, in the 90s, you, sometimes your first idea could become the biggest yeah. idea. Like a character named Exodus, you'll see in the story. So uh, that's the Avengers, is that there's two teams, both of them suck. Cool. And somebody figures out at the end of it that you should just put them all together. Ooh. Except not, just, no. We'll just make one Avengers book, and then the other one will be called something else. We're called Cancelled. Yeah. No, it's called Force Works. Force it is Cancelled, <laughs> which will then be Cancelled. Oh, big time. But extreme prejudice. <laughs> which is the theme of the story, prejudice. Of course. Being because in uh, the X-Men, um, we're the whole story takes place on the island nation of Genosha. Yay! Uh, which is off the coast of Africa. And uh, the idea was that Genosha was like supposed, to, supposedly it was like a utopian society where all races could come together and live in prosperity. And it, it had like technological advancement and like everybody was happy. And it turns out that like the reason that everybody was happy is because uh, there was this lower class of mutants that were horribly genetically modified 
by uh, the... G God, he has a name. It's like the Gene Engineer. That's his name. The Gene Engineer. And the, <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. And the Gene Engineer, uh, nice. he transforms like ch like children who will eventually become mutants uh -huh. into mutates, which is a uh, genetic experimentation procedure that was pioneered by a giant torso from the Age of Apocalypse alternate future named the Sugar Man, who was launched into the 20 years into the past found the Genotians, and then explained to the Gen Engineer how to use the mutate process. But that's the retcon. The original in this story is that the Gen Engineer knows how to, like, modify mutant DNA and then force them to, like, develop powers that they need in order to become the infrastructure of their country. Okay. So he can, like, tailor their powers yeah. rather than it being, like, random. Yeah, that's what a mutate is. Yeah. Uh, okay. In fact, Deadpool is a mutate. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Just a side note, I once had a World of Warcraft troll shaman who was named Sugarman. Yeah, that's, that's how it's pronounced. Yeah. And yeah, Sugarman, damn it. And but yeah, but hey, listen. Why is he Sugarman? You know, I don't know. <laughs> that's a very specific. It's very specific name. He, he does not seems to have no relation to that character. Based on if you were to see him, you would yeah, you'd be like, I don't know what that means. That's. Ran out of names. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, they were but don't worry, Sugar Man. They did make an action figure out of him. <laughs> of course they did. So Genosha uh, was toppled by its mutate population after the X Men got involved. Okay. Okay. And they so, like, led the mutate uprising. Yes. Or well, they rescued. Actually, some of the X Men were kidnapped oh. and forced into labor camps, mm. and then the rest of the X Men. Who showed was up. running the show? The Geonosian government. Okay. And there's not like a supervillain in charge. Not really. Were they like acknowledged by the like world governments? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It was really so it was like awkward. a legit country. Yeah. Okay. And so the Genosha Built was kind of lies. big time and slavery <laughs> and slavery, right? which is like a solid X Men idea. Yeah. And cool idea. now that like Marvel has X Men again, like you'll see more ideas like that in the future. Right. That's why I kind of dig blood ties. I'm like, this is this is an X Men story. Not flying firebirds. Maybe that's Although that is one of the most iconic X Men yeah, stories of all time. That's like, yeah, but well, like the first one. Sure. Don't do it like sixteen more times. But maybe that's what, that's how they'll introduce the X Men. Oh yeah, they, they well they, they could do that. They were doing they were in Genosha. They they got stuck there. Oh, that would be rough. <laughs> they just so, been there for too long. Plus, they just <laughs> invented uh, Sokovia. Yeah. Genosha is in the middle of a civil war. Sure. And okay. things are totally effed. Okay. In Genosha. So, I'm sorry, right. just the people who are living, like, the high life, they're... Oh, oh yeah, humans? they're in trouble, too. No, okay. no, humans. It was, no, just, just the humans. It was world. humans subjugating mutants. Precisely. This oh. is the early, this, so this is the beginning of Genosha. That okay. was the, no, I'm, I'm explaining where we are in Genosha right, and politics. Because right. we've heard of Genosha, but it was a mutant, like, paradise. Island. Yeah, so when, yeah, when we talked about Genosha from, the first time on the show, yeah, it was originally... It was much later than this. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, in, in the history of Genosha, uh, it was... Established by humans, yes. then overthrown by its mutate population, and then it was embroiled in the middle of a civil war. At what point does it float? Doesn't it? Doesn't it float? No. Is that in the, in the cartoon? I don't know. I don't remember. I thought I remember. It's it not floating, floating in this. <laughs> so, the idea is that like the civil war in Genosha is getting worse, Who's and the, who are the sides? Oh, the human populace and the mutate population. And are the X Men there? No. Do they see that happening? Did they leave, or have they not shown up? The X-Men left when they they thought they fixed it. They succeeded in having the mutates overthrown. They rescued the mutates. Right. They fixed the glitch, so <laughs> they won't have to, like, a subjugated population anymore. But the whole infrastructure was built on slavery, so right. as you can imagine, it was a tumultuous so, time. As soon as the X-Men left, it just... It just became a, a powder actually, can. And yeah. the X-Men were like, we did a good job. Yeah, and everything's yeah. going to be just fine. Let's <laughs> never learn anything Let's about this ever again. Let's go back to the wealthiest county in New York, <laughs> in the middle of the forest. Yeah, we just... We just well, we're like the U.S. military. We just went into this country. We fixed and it. Threw everything upside into, down. Yeah, and, and then left. It's, and now it's good. Yeah. And now the problem was that the X-Men didn't leave a contingent behind to pacify the locals. Right. right. They, they, just, they just got they in, just their, in their warbird? Blackbird. Blackbird. Blackbird? I never can remember what bird it is. Warbird is the name, the name of, of the... Ms. Marvel. It's also a Klingon. No, it's a... It is a Klingon. Ship. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a warbird? No, it's, it's a, a Robin. 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 That's it. 
Yeah. Klingon Bird of Prey, Romulan Warbird. Yeah. yeah. So. Nah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So they got on their Blackbird and they're just like. Later. They put their feet up. Because yeah. it's obviously automated. They don't really yeah. need to drive it. No. That's correct. Congratulate themselves. And yep. Throw paint on the back. Yeah. The X-Men have been dealing with. <laughs> the X-Men were the most popular comic book team anywhere during this time. So yeah. the X-Men had another problem. And an, Every sure. problem, it's like going from a job to a job. Every X-Men story has like one emotionally ridiculous conflict after another, and each one bleeds into the next. Yes. So it never ends, so you always have to keep buying X-Men comics. Right, and meanwhile, there's just so much sexual tension on the team. Constantly. Like, it, and it's never relieved. No. <laughs> because most of it has to do with Rogue, who can't touch anybody. <laughs> so, during, uh, so while Genosha is burning, uh, the X-Men also had been dealing with Magneto. And uh, Magneto is kind of like the whole linchpin of the story, even though you never see him. Mm. Uh, oh. He's in one panel in the story. Doesn't he end up like running Genosha? Yes. Okay. Eventually, he will take over Genosha and be, and it will and turn it into a mutant haven. Right. Which is Magneto's mo. Uh, first, Magneto tried to steal like an asteroid. And he was like, people, all the mutants can move to this asteroid. That's what I'm thinking. I think an, an asteroid, asteroid M. M. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> So he tried to put people on an asteroid, and the X-Men were like, no, kick the door in, and just, like, fuck that up. Well, so then, no, you can't live on this asteroid? No, you can't. Why? Because it's it, it makes us nervous. Because you're a bad guy. Yeah. Is there so a metal sure on this asteroid? No good. Maybe of course there is. He's using to, it. To destroy the Earth. He could, yeah, like, just throw true. it at them. So then... Uh, <laughs> well, he's riding on it in metal. Yeah. yeah so would be metal. <laughs> so then all the mutants that he brought to it. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, you're going to lose a few. you got to yeah. break a couple of eggs. That's true. <laughs> So, uh, Magneto was still not done with his orbiting utopia, so he then stole an orbiting space station that Cable used and renamed it into Avalon. Ah. And so, Magneto and his acolytes, who are other lesser mutants who are cool and wear identical outfits, all live on Avalon. After Asteroid M, the U.S. government and the X-Men were together to try and create like a anti-Magneto barrier around the Earth to keep Magneto from coming back. <laughs> and so Magneto released a great pulse wave, uh -huh. which knocked out all electronics on Earth. Oh, jeez. On Earth? Yeah. All of them? Yeah. Is that a power that he has or did he build a thing? No, he, had a, he used his powers to create a pulse wave, a magnetic uh -huh. pulse wave. So like vision that? shut down. I, I don't even know, honestly, <laughs> about what, how it affected vision, <laughs> but I'm sure it did because Everything was connected. Right. So after the pulse wave, the X-Men are like, all right, that's enough out of Magneto. So they form a contingent, they go to Avalon, and they kick the door in, and then Magneto pulls Wolverine's adamantium skeleton out of his body. Oh, that's when that happens. And that's fatal attractions. Oh. And uh, as a consequence, Professor X mind wipes Magneto, keeps his consciousness in the back of his head, creates onslaught, for another time, and leaves Magneto a comatose vegetable on the space station with his acolytes, and then they kick their feet up on the Blackbird's dashboard and fly <laughs> home, satisfied on another job well done. Awesome. Well, we basically killed Magneto, so... Yeah, that's except it, that's why didn't gone. you just kill him? If you're going to leave him as a vegetable that Fabian Cortez... Because killing is wrong. Yes. Unless you're but Wolverine. taking your mind Unless you're Wolverine. is fine. Yeah, no, and I loved it because when, when Magneto pulls the, the adamantium out of Wolverine's skeleton, Professor X is like, you have crossed the line now, Magneto. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you messed with our most popular character. <laughs> Which is hilarious also because I think the plan was they were going to kill Magneto, and then Peter David was like, because they were like, oh, Wolverine will come in and kill Magneto. Peter David was like, you know, if I were Magneto, I'd just yank that adamantium right out of his fucking body. And they were like, oh, that's the best idea ever. And he's like, well, but then he would die. That's a terrible idea. And they're like, but what if he didn't die, though? He's like, well, then it would be stupid. And they're like, let's do it. So then, no, it wouldn't. then they ruined Wolverine for like four years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thanks, Pete. So, <laughs> and he, he, by the way, he, he did. He was like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could no, take we already heard you. We heard you. That's it. happening. So Magneto's that, out of commission for this Yes. Book. He's, he's on an orbiting space station being taken care of and by his acolytes. And his bone claws. And Wolverine his bone claws. He left. At the beginning of this story, Wolverine is like, I don't know what to do. I'm bailing. So he just leaves. He just needs to be alone for a while. He goes, he goes all emo. And just, I gotta go brood. Yeah. Yeah. Does he go to Canada? I'm sure. 
And like he goes all over the place. Off and run around. Is he trying no, to find out like, the secret no, of his origin? No, he does not. <laughs> okay. Like the movies are obsessed with for no reason. <laughs> does he go to bars where women want to like have sex with him? And he's like, no. I don't know. Like, <laughs> You're not Gene. After he after he lost the adamantium, I went well. I'm not interested in Wolverine anymore. Well, yeah, because you, you can't really like, put Snicked. They no. still made Snicked, but it, it, they can't. Snicked. It was awful. It was like a like yeah. snacked. Yeah, <laughs> and like his because his they were bone claws, they could break. Right, and then they grow back. They grew back, but it, like there's this. It, my favorite image of one of my favorite images of Wolverine actually is that era, and it's him like knelt on the ground. And he has his bone claws extended, and two of them are broken and bleeding, and he's just screaming at you. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's rough. <laughs> that's badass. I want to see where Wolverine comes from there. Like, I want to see what he does. And unfortunately, what he does is nothing. Except devolve. Because then they establish that, like, the adamantium was actually yeah, inhibiting... Yeah, keeping him from, from becoming feral. Yeah. And, yeah. and then he loses his nose, it just grows into his face, and you're like... Does it, or do they just not want to draw it anymore? Well... They it's want not to make like him look more like an animal. Noses are easy to draw, apparently, but yeah, they wanted to look and make him look a little more. Oh. And they, none of the, not all the artists got like the notes, so the nose like would reappear and disappear throughout the books. Sweet. Anyway, so Wolverine's on the book. So Wolverine's on the book. Magneto's in it for one panel. Yep. Who wow. do we have? Oh, you've got a great cast. First of all, you have all the relevant X Men. So you've got Cyclops. You've got Jean Grey. You've got Professor X. Blue, uh, blue, furry, cool beast. Okay. Storm. Storm. Rogue? Yes. Rogue. Gambit. Gambit. <laughs> uh, sexual tension between the two. Woo! I'm Colossus. Excited. Colossus is in the book, but Colossus's sister Ileana Rasputin, who yes. is sometimes a teenager and sometimes a little girl, and AK Magic dies, and he has a really rough time of it. Okay. And Magneto and the Acolytes go to the funeral, and then he leaves with them. Oh. Oh. He he becomes disillusioned with Professor X's dream, and he's like, maybe it, well, if one didn't work, maybe the other one will. So he goes to to uh, Avalon with Magneto and becomes an acolyte. Oh. So is he on the space station? Yes, he is. Books? So he's basically yeah. taking care of Magneto because oh. amongst the acolytes, there's this character named Fabian Cortez who totally sucks and he's really annoying. Is he a pirate? He ah. sucks. He's an opportunist. Magneto also wound up calling up a guy who was super awesome named Exodus. And the reason he's awesome is because the writers all want him to be. I was going to mm-hmm. say, is he really awesome? No, he sucks. And he just, just a, treats him as awesome. Yes, he is a one-trick pony who totally sucks. He is a red-faced toolbox whose powers are endless. Mm-hmm. And he's also like... Legion. Yeah, and he's also like really old. And he also like worked for Apocalypse when he was like in Savannah and everything. Like, uh. just... Come on. Anyway. He's like a Mary Sue. Yeah, he's a total Mary Sue. Okay. Or a Gary Stu for men. <laughs> Which means nothing. Did you just make that up? No, that's oh. that's the that's, that's the that's the counter to Mary oh. Sue. Just tell us. Anyway. Right. So <laughs> have we Well the point is this we're getting there. Okay. So Fabian Cortez gets ousted from the Acolytes after he loses his number two position to Exodus. Oh. And with Magneto incapacitated uh, and Fabian Cortez, none the wiser, he doesn't know about Magneto's incapacitation or supposed death. Right. Nobody actually knows that Magneto, what happened on Avalon between okay. Professor X and Magneto, except for the X-Men right. and the Acolytes. And they're That's not it. talking. And they're not talking. So as far as the world's concerned, they all lost their electronics yeah. just not, not a few months ago. And so Magneto is this looming threat. He's mm. like an allegory for the Cold War, like... Uh, Ten years after it ended. Okay. <laughs> but uh, he's this looming threat that they're always constantly concerned about. And with Gen- uh, Genosha becoming this, like, political powder keg, they're like, if Magneto shows up, all bets are off. Mm. Right. Like, maybe this could cause World War Three. Like, this, this civil war between, like, Homo Superior, which actually they changed the name because of mutate is technically not a mutant. But anyway, the, the idea being that the mutate conflict might get the mutants all like, riled up and mm. unified, and mm-hmm. if Magneto winds up becoming the unifier, then, like, we could have, like, the war that Magneto wants right. so badly. And so they're all, like, really worried about it, and with the, with the, with the conflict spreading in Genosha and, the, and nobody knowing about Magneto, S.H.I.E.L.D. winds up calling up the Avengers and just say, hey, don't go to Genosha. And the Avengers yeah. are like, what? Why? And like, because it's real bad there. They're like, oh, we should go. And they're like, no, we don't go. 
That's why we showed up. And they're like, oh, well, we should totally go if it's really bad. And they're like, no, I just, what did I just say? <laughs> It's like you're not listening. And it's like, why did you even tell them not to go? They weren't going to go in the first place. <laughs> That's going to make them only want to go. Yes. <laughs> but what's great is uh, the Avengers are currently under the employ of the UN. Okay. Mm -hmm. They signed the Sokovia Accords. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say. Uh, yeah, no. The made. Avengers are technically agents of the United Nations. They were agents of the United States government. And then they were like, no, no, no. We're a world organization. Okay. So the UN winds up sanctioning the Avengers. And then they get hamstrung by all the regulation and bullshit that, that comes happens. with becoming a UN organization. It happens the way... Uh, the way that Steve Rogers in the movie is concerned about. Interesting. So... Who's on the Avengers? Who's on the Let's Avengers? Who we, who Great characters. Captain America. All right. All right. U.S. agent. That's cool. What? <laughs> who the fuck is that? That's uh, John Walker. He is a uh, rip-off Captain America. Oh. And he has all the powers of Captain America or your money back. <laughs> uh, okay. And he has a super soldier serum? Something like it. He went to the power broker and got powers that like mirror Steve Rogers, but okay. it's not the super soldier serum. He's also like not really even technically an Avenger. Oh. And by the way, I'm not even going to differentiate between the two Avengers teams because both Avengers teams come together in this story okay. to become one Avengers team. So these are the Avengers that you get to deal with. Okay. okay. Uh, Cersei, the Eternal. Okay. Uh, Crystal, the Inhuman. Oh, cool. I don't know who that is. Crystal the Inhuman is one of the youngest of the Inhuman royal family. Okay. She actually used to date uh, Johnny, Johnny Storm, Storm the Human Torch, yeah. oh. and then uh, she dumped him for Quicksilver, mm. and the two of them got married and have a kid named Luna. Oh. And now their marriage is kind of on the rocks because Quicksilver is a dick. Okay. Is he I, on the team? Yes. Okay. Uh, Scarlet Witch is on the team. Okay. Sure. Black Widow is on the team. Okay. Right. Black Knight is on the team. I don't what? know who that is. Black Knight is a knight. And he has like a noble <laughs> like a round table. Yeah, he carries on this like tradition of black knights that go back to the time of like Arthurian lore. Okay. But he's just a guy named Dane and he is the current Black Knight. So he's like, he has a lightsaber. He's like an Iron Man that can't fly. Yes, but they also have an Iron Man named War Machine. Ah. Uh, they also have Hank Pym, a.k.a. Giant Man. Okay. Vision. Uh, Hercules of myth and legend. Yep. Uh, and Hawkeye. And who's the spider chief? Oh, Spider Woman. Oh. Or, or Arachne, depending on what period you're talking about. Okay. I think right now okay. it's Spider Woman. But that's Julia Carpenter Spider Woman, not Jessica Drew Spider Woman. There you go. Uh, and that's okay. the Avengers. This is like way too many characters. Well, Don't worry. Vision. Oh, I said Vision. Oh, you said Vision. And he's in. And, and Vision's in there. And he's there too. And he's also in the book. And also Vision is there. So Nick Fury tells the Avengers like, "Don't get involved." They all want to get involved. Yeah. Then they wind up like talking about how like Genosha is this powder keg, and then for no reason whatsoever, Crystal is like, "Wait a minute, this could possibly have something to do with my daughter." The idea is that, like, <sighs> Fabian Cortez, the acolyte and performer number two with Magneto, mm -hmm. he gets kicked out of the acolytes, and so he misses the whole party when Magneto gets mind wiped. So he assumes that Magneto is just, like, hanging out on Avalon with, his new, <laughs> with his new best friend Exodus, who right. is scary and more powerful. And so Fabian Cortez decides he's going to, like, start mucking around with politics. So the first order of business is he steals Luna, Magneto's granddaughter. Okay. And then he brings her to Genosha where he is going to help fan the flames of civil war and maybe, like, carve out a niche I'm for sorry, himself. did she mention earlier that her daughter was missing? She discovers that her daughter's missing when Nick Fury shows up and starts talking about it. So this just happened? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, All the right. story opens with Fabian Cortez clutching Luna, oh. her infant daughter, who sometimes is, like, four and sometimes is an infant, depending <laughs> on who's drawing her. Okay. And uh, he's like, Luna, you and I are going to usher in a bold new... The idea is that he's going to muck around with Genosha and stuff, and if Magneto shows up, he'll threaten to kill his granddaughter. She <laughs> is a human shield wow. that is just an insurance policy to keep Magneto from killing him. Yikes. And she doesn't know that? Or she does? Who? Oh, she's, she's a, a baby. Child. She's a baby. She doesn't know anything. Okay. Crystal runs into, like, the nursery where she finds her daughter Luna's fine. Whoa, hang on. So, What? <laughs> But then it turns out that her daughter's actually a mutate that is impersonating her daughter. And it's like, lol, you're fucked. Genosha's, like, gonna, you know, 
rise and destroy the world, and your daughter's a big part of it, and bite me. And then... Wow, so it's like they wanted to get the Avengers involved in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Who are these... Never mind, I don't care. <laughs> Like it's Black been... Knight and, and Scarlet Witch and a mutate, like, nurse wife and stuff, or midwife. That's really the one I was looking at. Yeah. So in order to have leverage against Magneto, who's in a coma, they <laughs> <laughs> they basically force the Avengers to uh, get involved yeah. in, in stopping But don't them. forget, nobody knows. Good that... plan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Henry Peter Geyer shows up at the X-Men estate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Of yeah. course. Uh, along with U.S. Agent... And he's like, listen, Genosha's getting worse. We would like you, Professor X, to go to Genosha and help mitigate the problem. Maybe, like, start peace talk between, like, the two peoples of Genosha and, like, heal these problems. And by mitigate, we mean wipe everyone's <laughs> Like, take over their minds. Well, that would, be, be <laughs> that would be convenient. But <laughs> Professor X has been lying to everyone since he formed the X-Men about whether he's a mutant or not. So... He's a public figure and a pro-mutant activist. And according to the public, a human. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. So they're like, yeah, no, prominent, like, geneticist and scholar, Professor Charles Xavier, will go. And since he loves mutants, but isn't one, no one will have a problem with that. <laughs> okay. So he's like, okay, but I'd like Beast to come because Beast is fun and cool and he'd be, he'd be in the book. So it's, Professor X... Well, he's really smart, too, right? Yeah. And I just want someone to be able to talk to. Yeah. Well, it's also, on my level. <laughs> that's also the other thing is that, like, Beast is a, is a genius and has, yeah. like, knowledge of, like, the mutate issue. So, like, maybe he could help. Yeah. Professor X, Beast, Gyrick, and a, and a U.S. agent get a, like, government-sanctioned trip to Genosha to, like, helpfully stop the Civil War. And the Avengers can't come. Because ah, they're... they're... Because they weren't invited. Yes. <laughs> and... They like, mess everything up. They're a blunt instrument. Yeah, but they're also like... It's a diplomatic mission. They, they technically no work for the UN! Yeah, but they're they're the heavy... They're like an they're, army. They're yeah, like NATO. Whoa, exactly. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Go back one page. <laughs> Is someone shooting lasers at Rogue's butt? Yeah, uh, while they're having like a meeting <laughs> upstairs, the X-Men are training in the danger room, oh. and Iceman's like, hey, check this out, and he create. they're fighting lasers, and Iceman creates a reflective surface that bounces the laser off and then shoots Rogue in the butt, and of course doesn't hurt her, right. but does cut her costume. And Gambit goes, that's my department, Mona Me. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he asks Rogue if, if it's okay, she's like, it's fine. And Gambit's like, would you like Gambit to kiss it and make it all better? <laughs> Jesus. And Rogue's like, oh, you. <laughs> You die. Also, whoa, sexual harassment, but I don't think there's an HR at the professor school. So. And Bishop probably saying something, but you can't hear over his harmonica introduction. Wah, wah. Yeah, Bishop, by the way, makes no like bullshit references to the future at all. He's just he's oh. just there. Just it's actually out. kind of nice. <laughs> like, oh, you just no. have a normal goddamn conversation. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the professor is like, "Yo, X Men, uh, I'm gonna go. I gotta go to Genosha," and they're like, "Cool, cool." And he's, Quicksilver is at the X Men. He was actually a member of the X of X Factor at the time. He had like had taken a, taken his leave of the Avengers for mm-hmm. a while because like Crystal's on the Avengers and things are rough with them with, with between them right now. Right. So, so he, he was on X Factor. So well, yes. Yeah, so, well, because he's fast. Fury's like, you can't go, and the Avengers are like, stop us. And then Fury's like, I can because I have like all of Shield behind me because I knew you guys would fight me on this, and so the Avengers fight Shield. Cool. cool. Were they afraid that this book wouldn't be long enough? Uh, it needed to be a certain number of parts, so yes. Yeah, so it's and maybe, they fight Shield. Yeah, right? and, and maybe Nick Fury like deliberately instigated the Avengers into fighting Shield and going to Genosha because the Avengers never went to Genosha when it was a, like a slavery state, mm-hmm. and now that it is like a real like political quagmire, like maybe they need the Avengers. Like maybe they would actually help. Yeah, because Nick Fury is like all about that. Like right. he's always about like manipulating the events and stuff. But he seems genuinely upset. upset that the Avengers are like fighting him on it and also getting involved even though he has orders to tell them not to. Right. Mm-hmm. Well the writers could make it whatever they want. But that's true. Based, later on based on how people feel about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the idea is that like Professor X goes to Genosha. The Avengers want to go, but they're getting like cock blocked by Shield. 
<laughs> and so yeah. uh, there's a big cool fight between the Avengers and Shield while Professor X is just like sitting on the plane like da, 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 da. <laughs> do they uh, do they like kill anybody? No, no, no. no. So the they, Avengers they have a huge fight in which no one dies organization without anybody dying. So, yeah. So the Avengers like fight Shield for most of the book. So say, are, are you we kidding? ever gonna get to Genosha? Yeah. Okay. Cool. In fact, uh, Professor X, Beast, and his government contingent like land immediately. And they're taking a jeep, and they're going, and then suddenly, and then Be uh, Professor X tells Beast in his mind, like, "You better get brace yourself." And Beast's like, "For what?" And then it's like an ambush, and the uh, jeep is attacked mm. by rubble and explosions, and uh, then some tear gas gets thrown at them, and then Professor X pulls out some convenient gas masks and hands one to Beast, and then says, "Like, let's leave." And then so Professor X and Beast bail on the U.S. government's like team, including U.S. agent. Mm amidst the chaos to team up with Professor X's buddy who was created for this book uh, who is leading a mutant group of freedom fighters in Genosha. Okay. Fighting for freedom from whom? From the government of Genosha. Yeah. Ah. It's a civil war there. So, okay. Between the mutant and the human population. Okay, so the mutants, I thought the mutants were in charge. No. Oh. After the... No one was in charge. Oh, it just became a mess. Just, so the X-Men like set the mutates free but they didn't put them in charge. No. They just gave them, they just unshackled them. They killed Saddam Hussein. <laughs> they just, no, just, <laughs> and they left. And then they left. Right. They okay. won the fight. Yeah, they won. They, they won. So they, they went won. home. But they didn't really topple no, the government. No, we won. <laughs> We're no. the X-Men. They took, they took the subjugated population out of shackles and then left. And then, okay. I, I like that Beast was carrying Professor X like Master Blaster yes. from Thunderdome. He does that every time. Well, because <laughs> Professor X has no use of his yeah. legs, and Beast is like really agile and, and strong. Yeah, he's just yeah, like, hang okay. on. Let's do this. <laughs> so. Professor X, this is very demeaning. I just want you to be dead. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other would way. Would you rather be dead? Yeah, or would you rather crawl he's your like, way he's like, to safety? Hang on. He's like, I got one of those little front harness things. You could just. <laughs> yeah, like a big <laughs> bait, like a kangaroo. <laughs> Professor X's new friend, or old friend that we learned for the first time, Dr. Magcom, Magcom, Magicarp, Magicarp, Magcom, Magcom, uh, introduce Professor X to, like, the, you know, the resistance. Right. He's like, this is the resistance, and Professor X basically doesn't trust that, like, the tour he's going to get of the country is going to be a legitimate one. Like, okay. from the government? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so he's like, this is what I needed to see. Yes. I, I needed need to, to get off off the grid. Off yeah, the, I needed to to, to jimmy the, the, the cart off of the track right. and get it into so the real he Jurassic he orchestrate park. the ambush? or Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, he no, he, he coordinated with Magcom ahead of time, and then she, like, told him in his mind, like, okay, we're getting ready to launch the thing. I see. Which is why he had ma the masks. masks ready. Okay. But U.S. agents are oh, super cool. soldiers, so, like, he came too. Unbeknownst to them. Oh. So he's like hiding under the van when they're like oh, leaving. Oh, like, oh, what's, what are they doing? And what's funny is I was like, oh no, U.S. agent, because like he's he's more extreme mm -hmm. and he's a little like less like even handed than Captain America. So like I was worried he's gonna be like, I knew you guys were un American and you weren't gonna. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, he immediately joins with them. Oh. Yeah, why would they leave him behind? <laughs> because they, he's he's not not they can trust him. Yeah, he's not one of them. Yeah. One he's of not us. around here. <laughs> So then the X-Men pose for a picture that like, nobody takes because of course Professor X is like, yeah, I'm going on the government sanctioned like uh, trip to Genosha. You guys are going to go to Genosha using the Blackbird and you're going to like, oh. we're going to join up later. You so mean that's part the of the victory play. jet? Yes. Yeah. The victory <laughs> jet. <laughs> so the, the, the coolest members of the X-Men and Quicksilver go to Genosha I under cover of darkness. He's there too. Oh, he just doesn't. He just winds. Picture. He's not in the picture. Yes. Um, See, so there he is. There. Ah. When the X Men show up, they are greeted by the Unforgiven, which is a group of like super cool looking badasses that are led by Fabian Cortez. Ah. Well, I wish you gave us like a notebook to write down all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is complicated. So there's. There's like three factions? The only factions are, there's the human government, okay. uh -huh. there's the Unforgiven, which yep. is engineered by Fabian Cortez. And there's like yeah. three of them? Yeah, there's like a few of them. They're, they're total <laughs> bad. It, it varies between panels. Mm -hmm. We only had room for three on this page, but there's like four or five. Uh, and then there's the Mutates and their, like, and their cause, which is now uh, being aided by Professor X. Okay. Right. So then Fabian Cortez shows up and he's like, behold, my totally not rip off acolytes. Mm -hmm. 
and look at how cool they are. Um, don't tell Magneto I'm here or what I'm doing, you guys. <laughs> And his goal is to, like, conquer everybody? Yeah, basically he wants to, like, rule... He, he's, like, gonna rule Genosha. So he okay. wants to do what Magneto did on Avalon, but in Genosha. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he also doesn't want, like, Magneto to kill him. Right. Oh, cool. Which now, he expects. Now the Avengers are posing. Yes, because there's, like, battling in the streets between the humans and the mutants, so, like, then the Avengers finally show up in, like, the middle of the battle, and they're like, all right, knock it off. Okay, so they beat S.H.I.E.L.D., and now they're... Coming. Yeah, they def- Oh, yeah, the Avengers beat S.H.I.E.L.D., and... Yeah. They send the West Coast contingent to the UN to like justify fighting <laughs> to explain against what they, <laughs> yeah. their actions. Hey, yes. you guys go do the boring thing. You guys yeah. go apologize while we go do the thing we went to do. Yeah, not yeah. everyone gets to be a hero. You not go, all of our heroes punch faces. You go testify <laughs> before the Galactic Senate. Yes. on boring scene, floating. It sucks terrorism. because like there, it's it's like three pages. Right. Mm-hmm. It's actually just one issue of West Coast Avengers, but oh like, and of course it's headed up by Hawkeye, who's just like yelling at them. He's he bursts in the doors and he's like. I've seen Mr. Smith goes to Washington. I know how this works. They're That's like, what I was thinking. They're of. like, we're not in session. No, they're not. And he, they're like, oh well, God. you are now. Yeah. Well, court's in session. They're like, That's not how that works. This Wait, is this the UN. Not, what? What? Okay. So I'm calling this 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 tribunal to order. Yeah. No, they were actually. I, I think they were in like a private session, but they're like, we're not technically like meeting. And he's mm. like, well, you are now because the Avengers are invading Genosis. Are actually the West Coast? Oh no. Okay. I thought they are. Yeah. No. I meant, like, yeah. And he's like. Oh. So yeah, Who are you? No, basically Hawkeye like gives an impassioned speech, pisses off everybody, and like half the Avengers on Hawkeye's team are like, Hawkeye, we didn't even like agree about what we were going to say before the council when we got here, and you spoke for everybody. And so while the UN basically says like it's cool, the Avengers are there, things are getting really fucked up, and we could use a couple of costumes that are from the Ameri- like <laughs> that are from our, yeah. you know. Our, our countries and stuff. Right. Yeah. So uh, they do, but like so it as works. It works. But as they're leaving, one of the members of the UN says something to themselves, like, "We may have seen the day saved for Genosha, but I think we've watched the last day of the Avengers." It's basically because like Hawkeye pisses off like half the team, so half the team like quits the West Coast Avengers. And In that have... moment? No, like, no. They okay. all leave with him as a unified yeah. front, but like. Black Widow like gives them real like dagger stares and so mm, they can sense the tension. Yes, and they the sow the surface. seeds to the, the the formation of the greatest Avengers team of 1994, and that is Forceworks. Right. So don't lie. Which, by the way, we have a full trade of here in the office. So Yay. if anyone ever wants us to do Forceworks, let us know in the comments <laughs> down below. Please don't. We're never gonna do Forceworks. <laughs> so Crystal uses her inhuman powers of like controlling the elements to use wind and push everybody out of the way. Simultaneously, Storm, on the other part of the island, uses her elemental powers <laughs> to use wind and push everybody out of the way. <laughs> I mean, yes, but uh, they're totally different characters. So uh, they, they do, but then out of nowhere, all the humans die. What? what? They just explode in a flash of light. And they're like, Crystal, what are you <laughs> doing? Because when the Avengers show up, the humans are like, yes, the Avengers are here. Great. Help us out and stop these mutants. And the mutants are like, yes, the Avengers are here. Help us out and stop these humans. And then and the Avengers- Crystal's like, shut the fuck up. Because she, Crystal's line in this book is, I don't care. I just want to save my daughter, Luna. Oh, wow. So she just... Kills a bunch of people? No. Oh. No, I don't think wind think. would make them explode in But the she light. does have control over the elements, and so the Avengers are like, what the shit? But then it turns out that Exodus shows up. The most badass and cool, awesome mutant since Fabian Cortez. <laughs> uh, and he killed only the humans, and he's like, what up? I am Magneto's disciple, and I know what's best for everybody. What's so his power? His powers are infinite and endless. Oh. He's like he's like a psychic, and he's also like has, has energy projection powers, mm. and he's also like immortal and can't die. Oh, and like a lot of and his and his face is pink. He looks like a rejected character from Diablo. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Does he look rejected though, or does he look like a character from? Diablo? <laughs> <laughs> but it's great because he is so stupid, and he is so self-important, and everybody's just like, "Wow, he's awesome." And what's funny is like Black Knight. Is, is like, why does he seem so familiar? And the reason is because Exodus is really old. And like in the 12th century or whatever, one of the Black Knights fought him. Ah. Oh. Okay. 
but not this one. But does he have the memories of all the previous? <laughs> right, like no. So he's like but, Apocalypse. Like, yeah, he's super. Old, but he also like worked for powerful. Apocalypse. Oh, right, that's right. But okay. then actually, like a couple of the Avengers went back in time and fought Exodus, like during that time. So it's, <laughs> they they actually free him from Apocalypse, and then he goes into a hypersleep, and then Magneto wakes up later. So wait, if he's so badass, why is he following Magneto? Because. Magneto is a weird character who is Jewish, but also is totally not beyond being worshipped like unto a messiah. Uh -huh. And he is really impressive to certain, certain mutants. Okay. He basically gains Exodus's... Like, Exodus finds Magneto incredibly interesting and... Okay. It's like this guy. This guy's got the this right guy, idea. This guy gets it. This Mag guy right Magneto's whole like weird I could kick his ass. Yeah, I'm super powerful, but like, but I want like, what he's saying. But I'm so. also like, but he's seen so many people. Like, yeah, I, know. I guess that's the point. Is like, no, you don't get how awesome Magneto. Like, that's is. That's how. Yeah, like, this awesome guy. Hundreds yes. of years, he is like the best. It's almost <laughs> yeah. like he was created Coolest to guy. prove how awesome Magneto. Is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is also like, he he, he Exodus is a pain in the ass because like. He loves Magneto and he like worships Magneto. And then when Magneto is re rendered a vegetable, he starts like talking to Magneto and then start like interpreting the will of Magneto. Oh. And he's like, the great Magneto would want me to do this. And so everyone in the acolyte's like, oh shit. And then they start writing books. And <laughs> yeah, and it becomes a religion. Colossus is also like there on the on the asteroid when, or on the, on the space station when Exodus is like, Magneto wants me to get involved in the conflict. And Colossus is like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> that sounds like bullshit. But Colossus is also in like a weird state of flux where he is just the worst because Colossus like bails on Xavier, but also refuses to like be a bad guy with the acolytes. Right. So it's just like shit or get off the pot, Pete. <laughs> he's just sitting. On, he's basically Pick a like side. he's basically just like crashing on their couch. Yeah. Yeah. Later on, he'll actually wear their dumb uniform. Do they just like sew like three together to make it fit him? Because yeah. like he's huge. He is huge, but they one size fits all. <laughs> this is really stretchy. Oh. So the Avengers uh, meet Exodus, this awesomely badass X Men villain, sure. and the Avengers are fucked because the Avengers all suck. <laughs> but then War Machine fights Exodus, oh. a dude in a robot suit, <laughs> and he gets his ass handed to him, and the Avengers are like, "He beat War Machine. How are we ever going to defeat him?" <laughs> Which is hilarious because what? they have an Eternal on the team, and Eternals were created by Celestials, and they're imbued with like crazy infinite power. Yeah. Well, plus they have Wanda, who's a witch. Who yeah. Has magic. Well, yeah. Like they have. It depends. But while War Machine is fighting Exodus, Crystal's like, I don't have time for this. I've got to go save my daughter, and I will kill anyone who stands in my way. Yeah. And Scarlet Witch is like, Whoa. Crystal's acting crazy. I will be the voice of reason. <laughs> what? That doesn't seem like a good idea. She is. No, it's funny how like they kind of switch roles later on, but in this book, in this Scarlet book. Witch is the voice of reason. Sure. She's like, listen, here's what we're gonna do. You forget that kid. I'll just make you fake. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really Children. good at this. I'll whip you up a couple. It'll be fine. It'll how be we... just like the one that you well, lost. What didn't you like about the one you had? Right? Name, that. Moon, yeah. Luna, whatever. Oh, and the whole thing about Luna is that Luna is a human. What? What? The fact is, Crystal's daughter, Luna, is a human. Okay. Until she isn't. Right, until she gets exposed to Terrigen Mists uh -huh. and yeah. becomes a character. But that's not until after House of M. So, like, she's a human she's for a, a long As far time. as anyone knows at this point in time. She's a human. She's a human and always. And that's, like, a plot, plot point for the story. Okay. So, uh, Scarlet Witch and Crystal, like, leave the story. Uh, to oh. go look for Luna. To go look for Luna within the catacombs of, sure. of Genosha. Right. Because, you know, the Avengers certainly need to be, like, you know, two people down yeah. during this... Thing where the, the Genosha. Or I gotta find my daughter! I have to find my daughter! And I gotta look for my family! I don't know if you just noticed, War Machine got his ass kicked. Yeah, he, no, I have wait. to. I just have to find my daughter. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the Avengers are fighting Exodus. Ec yeah. Crystal is looking for Fabian Cortez. Cool. The sure. X Men are battling the Unforgiven. Which has and, Fabian Cortez. Which Fabian Cortez is at. Yeah. And Professor X, US Agent, and Beast go through the catacombs of Genosha to discover that the that there's a subset of mutates that are being subjugated and forced into slavery 
Again? Yes, by the 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 self-proclaimed president of Genosha, Fabian Cortez. And oh. they're being forced under there by a new team called the Magistrate Elite. Okay, they got another team. Jesus. Are they human? Yes. Okay. So if, wait, but Fabian, Fabian Cortez is leading a group of human? Yeah, to subjugate the mutates. Why? Wow. Because he's playing all the signs. Yeah. He's a master strategist. <laughs> Yes, they're all just pawns. Yes. yes. All of them. Yes. So uh, Exodus kicks the shit out of War Machine, and then Cersei is like, but you've never faced an Eternal before. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so Cersei and Exodus fight, basically to a standstill. Okay. And the, the What? That's how strong so he's, he is. So he's badass. as strong as an Eternal. Yes. Yeah. That's how awesome and badass Exodus is. Okay. And... Uh, their battle like winds up kind of like almost destroying the whole city because like they just keep shooting energy sure. and they're all like Cersei what are you doing you gotta stop <laughs> she's like no if I don't stop Exodus will destroy everything and so yeah, it's and super just, intense it's totally intense so There's then two uh, characters that nobody gives a shit about <laughs> <laughs> yes. are we awesome yet do you like oh, us yet on, ah. well because John Romita Jr. draws this chapter obviously he wants to do a thing where you gotta turn the book <laughs> 1993, we got to turn That's, the But they're book. not even using it! They're, what are you talking about? We're doing like cool panel layouts you've never seen before. Jesus. No. If it covers the whole thing, maybe, but you're just doing panels. Yeah. Just turned 90 know. degrees. Just, what do you mean? Is this, the, is this the issue where they go to the UN? Yes. All right. Well, yeah. let's just. We're good. I've already explained it. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Then this uh, weird guy dies. No, he's just. He's, he's wrecked is that because. Nova? No. Oh. It's Black Knight. No, it's Black Knight. Oh, that's Black Knight. I hadn't seen him on any other But he does yet. have a Nova-esque helmet. That's yeah. true. All right. Yeah. Um, now, the the X-Men are dealing with their own problems. They're seeing, like, the the collateral damage of, 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 of the Of a conflict. human and mutant kind. Yes. Both and, sides. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and the tragedy of it all. Cool. Precisely. We yeah. had a page where it was normal. Now we're back to that. Back to this. It's actually kind of really maddening. That's maddening. fucking Oh, and it doesn't even continue. No, it's great. So, uh... I'm not looking just, so Exodus knocks Cersei away from himself okay. in a huge explosion. Then Black Knight steps in because we want to establish this connection between Exodus and Black Knight, which is totally relevant, doesn't matter. Uh -huh. And then Exodus is like, oh, Black Knight, bye. And then he just leaves. <laughs> and then Cersei gets up. And she's like, let me at him. Let me at Hold me back, Black Knight, because I almost got him. Uh -huh. And Black Knight's like, what are you talking? Look at what you've done! And like this, half the city's wrecked. <laughs> Exodus just is screaming like screaming at each other. Yeah. Exodus remembers how much money he owes Black Knight. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, uh, adjusting for inflation, of course, yes. for the 12th century. <laughs> it's trillions of dollars. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so Quicksilver bumps into the X Men or whatever. And, and Jean Grey. No, sorry. Bought. Yeah, well, we got to do this. We want to <laughs> show is. that Quicksilver is running into Jean Grey. And how else can we do that but from her the vantage point of her fine ass? <laughs> So just experiment with camera angles. Yeah. All. So Quicksilver is doing recon, and he's uh, he's he's with Jean Grey, and the two of them are checking out the area. And then uh, when Jean and Quicksilver enter into a room, uh, Jean is immediately incapacitated by witch powers, and no. because it's dark, and Quicksilver like goes at the throat of the other assailant, which is of course his wife. And we see we were joining teams now. Uh, ah. Jean and Quicksilver bump into Wanda and Crystal and Fabian Cortez. Ah. Oh. Oh. And he's like, and he is becoming more and more unhinged because his plan is stupid yeah. and involves like 12 different teams and he can't keep any of them straight. <laughs> and he's also like really worried that Magneto's going to kill him. It's, and in fact, earlier. Why is he so convinced that Magneto's going to kill oh, him? Well, because, you should have freaking kidnapped him to his granddaughter if you were afraid he was going to kill you. Like, well, but that's just going to make him want to kill he you. He was worried that he was going to kill him beforehand. Because, why? Because Cortez betrayed him in an earlier story. Oh, okay. And yeah, but so, still, I mean, I don't yeah. know. But what's great is when Cortez first runs into the X-Men and Quicksilver uh, and his team, the Unforgiven, uh -huh. uh, they're all like, they're, they're like given, anybody who knows who Quicksilver is or Scarlet Witch taunts the fact that like they don't live up to their father's legacy because uh -huh. of course during this continuity, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are the son and daughter of Magneto right. and they will be again in the future because now the Fox is no longer relevant. Um, but what's great is uh, they're talking about how great Magneto is, 
And Quicksilver's like, oh, you want to be like Magneto? You want to be a brain-dead vegetable sitting on a satellite in the middle of space? And Cortez is like, oh, fucking really? <laughs> yes! And then he immediately, like, starts, like, fucking up the plans and, like, just going full hog on his stupid... Okay. Ridiculous. He's like, oh, I don't have to worry about Magneto anymore? Sweet. Well, so you could let Luna go then, right? Yeah, but no. Because... Okay. Oh, no, wait, but I'm a bastard. Is still yeah. there, and he's not working with Cortez. No, and so, he, that's who he fears now. That, oh. well, that's who he's he always going to fear in the first someone. place. Yes, but he was, but he's more afraid of Magneto. <laughs> but now that Magneto's off the table, the second most person he should be afraid of, he right. is afraid. Of. Is the guy who's way more powerful than Magneto, and is actually a threat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So then, uh, Quartz just always gotta be afraid of someone. It's my defining characteristic. Yeah. I'm just very fearful. Yeah, it's true. Oh, hey, look at that not infant. Right? Right. No, she's like 12, and then she she's like 8, and then later she'll look like not. It's weird. That's her inhuman power. What's great it's is, cool. so Cortez is like, nah, like, I know what I'm gonna do. Like, he starts like ranting and raving, and then Quicksilver literally says, You're ranting, Cortez. He goes, Of course I'm ranting! Oh my god. I'm the villain! part where I reveal more of my master scheme and then Exodus shows up and he's like hey baby and what's going on and he's like oh no uh, um, I heard you're totally scared of me you should be yeah well because super powerful well, they, they used to they, they had issues with each other back yeah. on Avalon and then uh, when Cortez got expelled from Avalon like Exodus basically took over Cortez's job okay but uh, all these characters we don't give a shit about have all this like rich History, and yes. I just don't care. No, how could you? Uh, so, yeah. Then the art takes a hard left. Which yeah, is wow. Really too bad, what happened? And it never gets better. Uh, <sighs> so Cortez taunts uh, the like teamed up X Men and Avengers that are in the sewers. So like the three of them? Yeah, like the no, there's like there's four, four or five of them. All right. So. He taunts them. I can't even keep straight. Where is Professor X right now? Professor X is He's with the Unforgiven. With, is, and... No, those are the X Men. Those are with the Unforgiven. Oh. Professor X and Beast and U.S. Agent are freeing the mutates. That's right. They're and finding the, the Magistrate Extreme. Oh, right. I forgot about the Magistrate Extreme. Okay. How could you not remember them? <laughs> They're a classic it's also straightforward and simple. <laughs> yes. So anyway, Memorable. the Avengers, after like talking Cersei down, they team up with the X Men, who are not fighting the Magistrate Extreme. Right. Like, because the X-Men wind up defeating the Unforgiven, right. and the Avengers wind up, like, not having anyone to fight anymore, so then they just <laughs> go to the capital city where they bump into the X-Men. And so the Avengers and the X-Men will team up, like, finally. Okay. So they make angry faces at each other. Yes. Uh, to try and get their bearings. But, like... Is that Cersei? Yeah. She does Okay. Fine. Yeah, her costume changed between the <laughs> artists. So the X-Men and the Avengers have teamed up. Now, they finally got all of their notes together. Okay. So you've got uh, you got a core team of, of Avengers and X-Men, you've got Professor X and his contingent, and you've got the other team of Avengers and X-Men who are dealing with Exodus. And you Exodus. a gambit hitting on Cersei. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he does. That's what he does. That's his defining characteristic. <laughs> so, Cortez uh, is oh, murdered by Exodus. Oh, oh. Like, practically off panel. That, that is shocking. Yeah, he's well, just like... Well, Luna? He, Exodus takes Luna. Why? Because now that, like, Cortez is gone and Magneto may never recover, Exodus is, like, the rightful heir to the lineage of Magneto. And so, like... What? He's gonna kill Luna in a big display of his power because what? she's a human who doesn't deserve his birth or birthright. Uh, but, like, Exodus is like, no, because Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch rejected their birthright of being, like, the true, like, heirs to Magneto's lineage, I will take their place and be, like... And, and fulfill Magneto's dream. And so uh, Exodus creates a big red bubble around uh, around Genosha that no one can uh, penetrate. Okay. So everyone who's in Genosha right now is stuck there, and anyone outside Genosha can't get there. Okay. And so... And he's going to execute this four-year-old yeah, or infant. Or infant. Or whatever. Uh, in front of everybody, because like I'm sure there's TV cameras. And there are, in fact... Uh, yeah. Beast's ex-girlfriend is like a reporter in Genosha, and she's reporting on the of course on is. the goings on. Okay, and so uh, Exodus is gonna like show everybody how cool and awesome he is, and how like he is the true heir to like Magneto's lineage. Right, and, uh, right. And so, so executing Luna, who could be considered an heir, yeah, is like his way of being like, nope, it's me. Yeah. Well, also because like we also a human, right? And so and to show like how inferior humans are, right, right. Yes, by 
a full grown, <laughs> super powerful man killing an yeah, who can defeat an ex- eternal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely right. showing me how powerful you are, yep. and not how much of a dick you are. <laughs> yeah, true. Not how like fucking insecure and weird you are. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow, that's a lot of butts in one. Well, we've got enough. We got a lot of girls in this scene. <laughs> yeah, we do. So we have to show off all their asses. <laughs> I'm sorry, assets. That's what I meant to say. No, wait, assets. Yes, that's what I meant to say. The Avengers the and yet. the well, because Professor X's team wind up getting pinned down by the magistrate elite and like the civil war that's erupting because like while all these other fights are happening the general population is also fighting each other right. so like the whole damn place is just one big war and who's leading the magistrate elite again well, Cor- well cortez was but now he's dead <laughs> now he's dead was but, he but there do, they don't when, know that no he was he was in the sewers okay so, so he was not with the unforgiven nor was he with the magistrate elite. he was with the unforgiven and then he bailed he was like well you guys have, had, have got this i gotta go be in another scene later we- that was Cortez. Okay. And then he changed costumes. He was going to go to the Magistrate Elite, so he was trying to put on his Magistrate Elite costume. He doesn't need then... to wear like, a different costume. <laughs> so he was leading both groups, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't know that he's dead. They're still fighting. Right. Okay. So the so Professor X and his team are pinned down, and and, and they're pretty much like, we're going to die. You're going to die? Because the You're Magistrate Elite are so... So powerful. powerful with their cool. Well, why does the professor just take over their minds? Because or they have mind in, like ah. inhibiting like things in their helmets. I should have known. Okay, they all have. They all have Magneto. Everyone's got a Magneto helmet now. And yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of makes Magneto not special. Well, no, it's it's an electronic inhibitor. Kinda so makes like, Professor X like useless. <laughs> professor X's like hot friend gets shot in the arm. Oh no! And you're like, oh no, all is lost. But then the X Men and the Avengers break through the wall. Oh. And then. Uh, do an exciting rescue and defeat the magistrate elite. Okay, so now that's done. okay. No, everybody's in a room together. Yes. Now well, no, all together. because Exodus is still in the sewers with like yeah, but all Scarlet the good Witch guys. Right. Oh, all the but like all the coolest people are doing their are doing their part to defeat the magistrate elite, who are basically like a private army that Cortez charged with like keeping the mutates down. So right. these super powered people come in and hit these people, just regular people. Oh yeah, with all of their powers. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not like they all just like shoot energy at them. You know, they like they, they take them out. Yeah, okay. take them down. Take them, they, take them, take them down. They do, do their, their uh, do, 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 do their, do, 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 do their do stuff. stuff. So while they're all fight, because like, I mean, remember, like the big, the, the cool f- war with all the the people and the magistrate elite and Professor X and the Avengers, and the X Men. That's nothing. The true battle is in the sewers with Exodus. <laughs> no, it's not because because Exodus created that big bubble around the city, I, right? Um, and Meanwhile, the West Coast Avengers, you know, who had to go to the UN, yeah. they team up with Fury, who's like, well, now that the UN says it's, o- uh, it's okay, I guess I'll give you guys a ride. So they all get in a helicarrier and they go to Genosha. But there's this big bubble around it, and so, like, they use uh, Vision and their computers to, like, check out the bubble, and what they find is the bubble is shrinking. Oh. And Exodus is going to crush Genosha. Why? And himself? No, he'll be fine. He's going to get out. Yeah, he'll get out. He'll, he'll move through the bubble or whatever. It does obviously doesn't crush, so we don't get yeah, to see. We don't, get to see we don't really know what he would have done. Why if does he, had he want to crush an ocean? He wants to show his 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 power. So wait a minute. His plan is to murder a human infant inside the bubble to show everyone how bad it is. is. And then kill everyone who just saw it by crushing them with well, the bubble. But the, the, the news crews that are showing everything are also going to, like, they're, they're going to display, like, the first part of the message, which is, like, I'm a badass. <laughs> Okay. Then they'll die along with everyone on Genosha. And, and that's the second part. Of the the second part of the message where he's outside the bubble because everyone will, will have seen that through yeah. like Trish Tilby and her and her news crew. Okay. He doesn't understand like scaling, does he? No. I'm gonna kill a child. And then I will kill the city. Yep. No, that's, that's, which that's, has many that's, children. That's called escalation, Tiffany. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. He just went. From, he goes from like zero to sixty in like, oh, yeah. like a half second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> and then he's gonna rule the world after this, or more or, or less, or something, or whatever. Uh, well, he's going to like inherit. What's his motivation? I'm his t- motivation is that he be- he believes he's in. He's he, okay. He thinks he's carrying out what Magneto truly wants, and he's doing it with like a like a radicalist fervor because well, he's killed mis- a bunch of mutants, right? They're in the bubble too. Well, but they oppose Magneto's will. How do you know? Well, because they're fighting me. No, Some they're of them fighting are, you because you're a dick. Well, yeah, but like if 
if you were on my side, you wouldn't think so. I no, I think even if I was on your side, I think you would. Well, then I will prefer to die. <laughs> so, what about the mutates who weren't on anyone's side? Well, that, Professor X cared about them. Oh. So they're with Professor X now, so they're all going to die too. Yeah. Even though they didn't really they were just fighting the humans. Yeah. Why isn't he filling Professor X's role and like helping them against the humans? Because Why is he, he just killing everybody? Because he's Magneto now. Oh, okay. Because he's... Magneto doesn't really care about mutants, I guess, is the whole thing. Like he really cares about like gratifying himself. Well, I mean that's a character study for Magneto, yeah. but Exodus does believe I mean there's other mutants out there. I assume Exodus right. misunderstands. Yeah, well he, he he takes it to the nth degree yeah. to fanatical insanity territory. Right. So so uh, I'm just a little, sorry, a little confused about the bubble. Is the bubble covering all of Genosha? Yes. Or is it like going to eradicate the population of Genosha? Yeah. Wow. It's mostly humans anyway. So yeah. yeah, but there are mutants there who are like freedom fighters, and he's just like, no, yeah, them. but you didn't take my side That's immediately right. when I showed up. Yes. So you're all dead. Yeah. Oh, man, is Jean Grey incapacitated? Wow. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so. Is that, just, this is a side, but like, do they do that because they're like, but she she would be powerful, so we got to take her off the table. More or less, fix it with her mind power. Well, Professor X tries to take out Exodus, but his powers are far too great. Oh, now you know just how badass Exodus truly is. Okay, so Professor X can't take out. Uh, his face just keeps getting redder. Exodus. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like it wasn't not that red. Yeah, before. now he's well, bright red. Before he's like kind of pink. Ramita Junior's colorist made it like pink. Yeah, yeah. and like. Andy Kubert's artist made it like fuchsia, and so now it's red. <laughs> and now he's really mad. Yeah, I mean, he's and, and really he's, he's building <laughs> yes. a bubble, and it's crushing the city, and he's also fighting the Avengers and the X Men. That would make you a little bit tense. He's supposed to pee. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he's gonna destroy everybody, and Professor X can't penetrate Exodus's mighty awesomeness. <laughs> but he noticed that like. While, like, that. but in the, but in the chaos, nobody noticed that Black Knight was like underneath Exodus. What? And Exodus doesn't care because, like, when Exodus like pushed everybody out of the way, like Black Knight was still there. Okay. And so no one regarded him because nobody cares about Black Knight. Right. But Black Knight is connected to Exodus in some way, uh. which we will reveal sometime in the future, which I've already revealed earlier in this episode. Yeah. He hits Exodus with a mind whammy, and Black Knight cuts Exodus down with his, like, lightsaber. Okay. And... Jesus. Then he picks up Luna and delivers her to her mother, and that is the defeating of Exodus. Like, literally, wow. Exodus just hit with an energy sword and a mind... But he was distracted attack. by the mind attack yes, and, then and cut then, in half with the... Uh, yeah, the but, like, he doesn't... He isn't cut in half like Darth Maul. No. It's more like energy... It looks like he's cut in half, but he isn't. In where's, his, where's his head? I don't... It's right there. It's his chin. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's like his arm... Yeah. ...and shoulder is cut yeah, off. It's not cut off, though. It just goes through him. What? Yeah, it just, like, incapacitates him. It's not a, it's not a lethal oh, sword. Oh, it's like a... It's like if a lightsaber only had like twelve percent power, <laughs> so okay. just like go around, like over you. Okay, it's like a stun thing. Yeah, kind of, That's or like really electricity. Dumb. Yeah, well, we need. We didn't want to kill him. We just established how awesome nice. Exodus okay. is. Okay, but he is defeated for now. But he is defeated yeah. for now. So he's like unconscious. Oh yeah, I see him. He's just laying on the ground over there. Okay. Yeah, and well, Professor X is still screaming. Yeah, well, he's yelling at like the leaders of the mutate army who are like. Or the, you know the mutant freedom fighters yeah. and whatever because like they were allowed because it was he's like violence doesn't solve anything see you just use violence to stop that guy yeah, but that guy was using more violence ah <laughs> he started with violence so I had to use violence to stop it well like but he, other than that violence doesn't he, solve he it. seized the opportunity because of the civil war right and he wouldn't have so been like, able you gotta to stop we have to stop and then Exodus wakes up and then leaves. What? what? Because he's so awesome and powerful. <laughs> Not because he's afraid that he'll get like defeated again. No. So he... he he also shoots Quicksilver because he's mad because Quicksilver like rejected his Magneto heritage, and everyone's like, "Oh no, Quicksilver's dead!" And then Quicksilver's like, "Oh, I'm fine," because Black Knight gives him CPR. He's the true hero. Yeah. Because <laughs> he is CPR sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so so Exodus is like, "Let's get out of here. Let these sissies have their party." <laughs> Yeah. He like tries to act like he wasn't just beaten <laughs> yeah, by Black Knight, by Black Knight on then, national television. And then the band strikes up. Yeah. 
So, so d- does anyone like we have to stop him? And Professor's like, let him go. No, it, they just he watch just... him leave. I think it's. I think that they they try to avoid that cliche by having him look like he killed Quicksilver. So they're all too busy worrying oh, about. Oh yeah. Right, like but secretly Professor X is like, maybe he'll get left in the nineties. Yeah, and <laughs> indeed he will. <laughs> so then, uh, Professor X and Captain America have like a tender moment looking at the city from afar, which is like the only way to look at Genosha. Mm-hmm. And they're like, whew, rough day. And <laughs> then- But we did it. Yeah, but then this other character who doesn't matter, mm-hmm. uh, Ransom, that's her last name. She discovers halfway through the story that Professor X is a secret mutant. Oh. Yeah. And so Cap and Professor X are hanging out and talking and she's like, yeah, Professor X, you're a massive hypocrite. And Cap's like, whoa, 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 this is Professor Charles Xavier you're talking to. And and Chuck is like, listen, I, I deserve this. Let her, let her, let her, let her come. And so she's like, you're full of shit. You're going to become Onslaught. It all sucks. Eat a dick. She doesn't say that. Right, like, yeah, right. But it's like, yeah. she's, she's not wrong. It, it's the yeah. preface to, like, Professor X is not all good. No, even though, like, Professor X has never been all good. Like, right. Professor X formed an X-Men team to rescue the first X-Men team that he sent to their deaths. Right. Like, he's he's he has so many skeletons in the closet. Professor X hid the identity of Scott Summers and Alex Summers' third brother because he technically was a member of one of Professor X's X-Men teams that technically died. <laughs> and he didn't want anyone to be mad at him for it. So, like, the, the, Professor X is to a... keep it a secret. Yeah, so Professor X is a constant hypocrite and a huge douche. <laughs> And so Ransom lets him off easy, and <laughs> Cap is like, "She didn't mean anything by it." And Professor's like, "Yes, she did." And then the and then the story ends, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> like what? What she says? Just he's, read? he's a hypocrite. She means like because he's a mutant. Yeah, because he's because he's like he pre- not, he, he is understand. a mutant, and he like pretends to care about like the mutant conflict and like go out and like you know join advocacy groups and protect mutants' rights, but he's also, like, hiding his mutation. He's hiding the fact I that see. He's so he's like, you should be... You should be an out-mutant. Yeah. What's also great, <laughs> you weren't wrong about having notes for this book because there's a notes page in this trade that you can keep, you know, to keep all the characters. So you can keep track of this. Of the nonsense. teams and the characters and everything. Jesus. Love it. Like, all right. You know. That is hilarious. Avengers X-Men Blood Ties. <sighs> That's an X-Men book. I'm sorry. That is... That is... That is, yeah. The is, Avengers are barely a footnote. Yeah, but, and but that's the because they're always barely a footnote. is X-Men. Despite the fact that there were two Avengers books, the Avengers are always a footnote in Marvel's <laughs> history, up until they aren't. But during this time, they are so wholly irrelevant. Yeah. They're wholly irrelevant to the point where one of the teams is left on a boat away from them. And is just stuck watching everything happen. One, the, the plot for Hawkeye is he gets to go to the UN and then watch the story end. He <laughs> makes this little speech and yep. then, then... Oh, he also ruins the West Coast Avengers. Why, why is it called Blood Ties? I, because of because the... Because this is like all like... And because Luna is tied to... All right, Luna. that's real thin. I know. <laughs> Avengers X-Men Blood Ties. Pick it up in the description box below this video to read... One of the most complicated uh, Avenger stories of all time, uh, except for the ones where they go back in time. No, no. this is fine. This yeah, is, that's pretty straightforward. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's just, it's it's just, just like a lot, a lot of pieces. Yeah. yeah, but it's not like overly like complicated. Complicated. There's just a lot. There's just a lot of characters. Yes, yeah. and, and a lot of teams. It hel- it's easy to navigate if you just keep in the back of your mind that none of these characters matter. <laughs> I mean, there you go. Yeah. Cool. They're only as relevant as they are when they are on the page you're reading. Has Exodus ever come back? Of course. Oh, okay, yeah, no, they couldn't stop using Exodus. Yeah. Until they realized what a, like, OP Mary Sue was, and they were like, oh, oops. Well, they they just he... get rid of him? Eventually, they just stopped writing about him. Oh. Does he have an epic confrontation with uh, with uh, Magneto at some point? You know, I don't, I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Is he like the Burgermeister? He just falls out of power, and then everybody kind of forgets about it's... him? Right? Like, <laughs> so unsatisfying. <laughs> He's the main antagonist, and then, like, yeah. through narration, he is out of the movie. I feel like... That sucks. <laughs> I feel like Magneto should have a showdown. I it's agree. Like, but I'm carrying out your legacy, Magneto. And Magneto's like, that's not what I want. Yeah, yeah I'm no, sure that's a story. I, yeah. t- listen, 
They stopped. <laughs> All right? Right. Not a year or so later, the clone saga will happen, yeah. and I'm going to get off the trolley for a long time. <laughs> so, like, you know, there's a couple of gaps. Yeah. I don't care about Exodus. How, or, how, how long after this is Onslaught? I want to say, like, a year or so. Okay. Because okay. it's like... Fatal Attractions, Blood Ties, Onslaught, it's right after the other. Okay. Wow. It's, it's, no, it's always a thing. Okay. Alright. It's always a is thing. Is Exodus involved in the Onslaught story? I don't no. remember. Okay. No, he's not. Okay. He just sits Maybe over because there, he's he just fears over Onslaught. Yeah, I guess. He's like, I'll let other people handle that. Yeah. I don't want Onslaught. Also because, like, it would suck. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Onslaught is also an Avengers X-Men story. Oh. Hmm. Well. Anyway. See you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching. <laughs>